Hi everyone, welcome to Handicrafts A to Z channel and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to dress an ink loom, how to, uh, how to handle the threads, the warp and how to get the shuttle and everything done. So you, obviously you need an, an ink loom, you need a shuttle, you need threads for, for, the, uh, for the band, the, the, the tape that you're gonna weave, yarn scissors, crochet hook, ruler and the size 10 crochet crochet thread let's get started hi everyone welcome to handicrafts a to z channel and in today's video as you can see we're going to talk about the inca loom and the, today's video is dedicated to recognizing the loom and how to warp it so I have the Ashford Inca loom but you might have some other companies and what it consists is the frame the number of pegs and the tension peg that's the peg that actually moves along the frame and when we warp it we start at the closest position to the beginning peg it's over here I'll try to set the camera so you can see everything but unfortunately it doesn't fit the loom itself doesn't fit so I'm gonna fidget it around and this is the pattern I'm gonna start warping right now you can see got four colors the brown beige orange and blue it's kind of the bright blue and my fingers are all covered with fungicide because I was just reporting another hippiastrum having a 300 here around is a mess well anyway so when we start warping we look at the frame at the pattern this is actually the warping pattern and we start just like any loom this one has uh, the heddle and unheddled threads just like in a rigid heddle loom it's just that we have but instead we have the heddle threads a state uh, without any movement and the unheddled one is operated by lifting and raising it down but that will be discussed later on and so far so when we start the first thread here is the warp one the yeah the, the warp that goes into the heddle and will be attached to this bar the second one is the free range and then again the, the heddled and so on and here's the at the bottom of uh, at the side of each pattern you can find in the internet anywhere just type the in column pattern uh, there will be the, the description so this is how you do Heddle and heddle, heddle and heddle, and this is how you warp the the loom. I know the lighting isn't, isn't really good, but it's the only way I can fit the whole loom into the picture. And right now, what I start, according to, I will put the link to the pattern at the video description, so you can download it and ch check it yourself. And what I have here now are the yarn scissors thread and the pattern I first get enough yarn myself to operate so just make sure that it's not tangled and of course it is tangled I'll just cut it off and what I do here is I have the little thingy here so what I do I tie the little knot like this some people advise to make the proper knots but it's difficult to cut it off when you finish so I just do it like this so when I finish it I just pull the thread on 
and that will be done so the heddled threads are placed above this pack so what I do now is just place the warp on the pack on the back to the tension bar you have to check with your manual because if you have a different loom you might have the different order to warp and just manipulating it like this mine is a bit loose now I have to glue it on once the pegs fall off and now the next pick goes the free one it's a free one don't don't lose the tension your tension should be equal along the whole warp so you just the free range goes in here so when we do the handle it goes like this Mm, I think I've done something wrong here. No. They're definitely wrong. That's the, the common mistake. Sometimes you get confused and get the, the warp on the top back. So always check where you place your warp. Now the third thread is also going into heddled position so again I warp it up there's a third thread that we make so it goes all the way here and you can check the the correction of the pattern either here on top on this pack or at the tension bar and so it goes like this and I'm gonna show you how I switch the, the colors because we come, come to the point where the warping we have to have the another color and I cut about about four inches away and now comes the blue And if you're familiar with macrame, you would recognize this knot. And I just it's a bit uncomfortable with the camera hanging in front of your nose. Now what I have to do, I get the tension back. I fold the thread with a loop like this and all I have to do is the just a second so you make yourself the tiny loop like this and you keep it as close to the pack as possible because that's where your thread will begin the weaving will begin and you insert the thread into that loop wrap it around bring the thread upward and insert back into the loop so it's kind of two threads are hugging each other and you pull it tight 
just like this and I'll repeat it with a color change next row and according to the pattern I have to make the three rows with the blue that's why you have to keep it close to the bar now the second thread goes unheddled it goes free to the tension bar to the back now if you can see that but so we've done two pairs and three color three threads are brown one color is one thread is blue and again it goes one heddled um, all the way through the loom again unheddled yeah warping the loom isn't the especially on video isn't the easiest task to do but it's fun to weave now over here I'm back and I have I have to add the beige the beige thread and again try to get get the lights closer I don't know if you can see that but I guess it's definitely better now I have the beige and will be one pick one row beige then the other row orange so I'll, I'll change the colors every other, other thread and again I make the loop and the camera slides away immediately so I make the loop don't twist it should be like this just fold the two threads you insert the thread the beige one from underneath wrap it around this little loop that we have and insert back into the loop So you have have something like this and now all you have to do is carefully pull it gently on both sides and you've got the nice note so this is how you warp the whole loom I'm gonna warp the loom and I'll come back with the with the handles and everything else on so the warping is done everything is set completely and the last thread that goes into the heddle and I chop it off and I untie the knot here you might need the smaller crochet hook to open up sometimes it just doesn't open by itself so you can just cut off the extra as far as you have enough length to 
cut these two ends to uh, to tie these two knots together ends so I've done this and now we have to move to the heddle part the heddle part every loom has its own distance for the Ashford it's measured over here and I use the standard crochet thread to the slip knot tie it over and you can wrap in any direction you like but since I'll be cutting it from here it's easier for me you can make next wraps because you usually do the heddles once or twice in a lifetime of your work with a loom and just wrap it up like this you have to check with the with the manual of your loom because every loom has its own heddle maker space and goes like this even if you wrap over it doesn't really matter because still there will be some measures done after you cut the, the heddles I guess for this make a couple of more cut these are the heddles that we'll be using this goes to the waist and using the ruler I have to check again the manual of your loom because for, for the Ashford loom the space for the heddles is 12 centimeters so you fold the thread in two, in half, place the, the thread on the ruler, measure 12 centimeters, and I'm holding the knot just at the space where the 12 centimeters is, and I'm using the crochet hook, make the loop, pull the thread through the loop, and tie the knot as close as possible to your to the place that you're holding so you see why it doesn't really matter if you have overlapping th threads because they will be anyway measured here so this is my 12 centimeters just to make sure that's my 12 centimeters and I tie the knot and that's the heddle and again to show you this is the folded double and slightly twist so you got a nice sharp end 12 centimeters I guess that would be uh, four point eight inches make this loop pull the tails measure it so you get exactly 12 centimeters I just pull the loop a bit higher Yep, 12 centimeters. So you have to do all this stuff by yourself. And I will continue with the warping, with, with fixing the, the heddles. 
Now once you've done the, the enough handles, all you have to do is apply them to the threads. So what we do, we pick up the first thread. Since it's the first one, it doesn't apply to the threads below that go unheddled and running free. Just fold it like so your, your tail is under the peg. Put it on the peg and get the next one. So I got this one is heddled. Now this time, since the first heddled one has already paired, I skip one thread below and leave it between two heddled ones and apply it to the peg. Again, First, apply, skip the next one, that it goes directly uh, to the headled, done. Next one, and it goes like this until, until you finish all your headles. And once you've done that, again, I skip one. I'll place the heddle. At least it's much easier than warping the rigid heddle loom. You don't have to run around the house trying to figure out where to stick the threads. Okay. Next. So it goes like this, it might go depending on your warping for an hour or maybe it takes 20 minutes depends on how many threads you have in your warp so I'm gonna finish handling and I'll come back now once you've finished handling all the threads all you have to do is pull them tight so they'll stay the same make sure you got your pattern right raise and pull down oops i got them make sure you got all correct and you don't have something like this happening this has to be redone because as you can see i've got it's either redone or untie and retie so always make sure you've got the right threads going in the right hole so i'll have to re redo this I will continue once I finish this. Okay, I've rewarped it and just to make sure that everything is correct, get the heddles straight, put the unheddle da down, raise it up, just to make sure that you, all your colors are don't mix up. And we are almost ready to start weaving. The last thing we have to make is to wind the shuttle. So the loom is dressed, the shuttle is also getting ready. For the shuttle, uh, for the weft, since we don't see it on the background, unless something is specified, use the same color thread. I got a slip knot and start twisting. As, as we're speaking, use the same thread that we use on the edges because that, that, that way the, your edges would look nice and neat unless you have something specific like uh, different colors crossing when you're weaving with two, uh, two shuttles well in this case you have there's a different technique that I'm going to show you but so far as a beginner use the same thread for the weft as for the selvage warp that you use for these shuttles are small and nice they're not like huge rigid head looms that they have like 70 centimeters but 
is a nice and cozy and fit into your hand. There are also other types of shuttles that we're gonna review later. I'm gonna show because my daughter made one for me and printed it out on the 3D printer. So if I if I find it useful, I'll give you the link to the shuttle where you can download and print it yourself. So I guess that would be enough like this so probably will be more leftovers and we're ready to start living the loom is dressed huddled and the shuttle is ready let's get started